All right, so welcome back. Next section, module finite extensions and plus closure. Um, so in this section, uh, R will be an integral domain. So we don't have to worry about uh, equidimensionality like what was talked about in the questions. Um, Um, so, um, so let I be an ideal and let X be an element of R. We say X is in the plus closure of I. Um, if there exists a module finite domain extension R into S. And what I mean by that is that S is an integral domain and you've got this uh, uh, injective uh, ring homomorphism from R into S such that S is um, uh, finite as an R module, finitely generated as an R module with respect to, to that, uh, the, the structure homomorphism of, the, of that, of that but as a module, I mean, this homomorphism, um, such that, um, so let's call this phi, such that phi of X is in E of I S. And so we write, we usually write X is in I S intersect R. Right? Because it means that X is in the pre-image of that, of that um, um, the extension. Okay, so proposition uh, plus closure is a plus is is a uh, closure operation. Okay, so what do we do? So let X and Y be in I plus and let R an element of R, and I want to show that X plus R Y is there. So, um, so there's these module finite um, domain extensions um, R into S and R into T, such that X is in I S intersect R, and Y is in I T intersect R. And so, what we want to do is we want to find a common module finite domain extension <coughs> of S and T. And um, uh, you can always do that. Uh, and I noted the footnote how to do it. Um, it's like you take the, the it's, it's, a, it's a, like a push out construction. Um, so hence, X and Y are both in IU intersect R. So uh, X plus RY is two. Um, so I plus is an ideal. Um, and uh, I claim that extension and order proper order preservation are clear. Um, and so if X is in I plus plus, so we want to show idempotence. Um, um, so you have X is in I plus S for some module finite extension S. Um, let uh, Y1 through Y uh, K generate I plus. Um, then um, let T1 through TK be module finite extensions with um, Y, I, Y, J in I, T, J. Um, find a common module finite groups of S. Find a common module defined extension U. Then um, each Y, I is in I, U. So X is an IU as well. Okay. So now let's say you have a module finite extension of domains. Um, take any non-zero element D of S. Um, then there's um, some R linear map, module map. Uh, call it G from S to R, 
such that g of d is non-zero. This is what um, Al Hoxter later called uh, solidity. So basically, I'm saying that S is, uh, is solid as a normal. Um, and so what do you do? Um, so let W be the non-zero elements. Um, and so then Q is equal to the fraction field of R is equal to RW. Um, then for all W and W, we have WD not equal to zero. So D over one isn't zero in Q. Um, in SW, I guess I should say, right? So you have RW into SW. Um, and so, separate that. Oh, um, okay. So what do you have? So then SW is a Q vector space. It's a finite dimensional, finite dimensional Q vector space with uh, D over one um, zero. So then it's um, part. So then D over one is part of a minimal generating set. That is part of the basis. Um, so let a B from SW to Q be a projection onto like that element of the basis. Um, so, um, and that's a Q linear transformation, right? Um, but um, the set of Q linear transformations from SW into Q is what HOM, RW, SW, RW. And then since S is finitely presented as an R module, that's the same as HOM, R, S, R, localized to W. Um, so there's a uh, R linear map from G from S to R and C in W such that B is equal to G over C. And then that's the same thing as saying that g of d over c is phi of d over 1 it is 1, which is c over c. And since we're in domains, that's the same thing as saying g of d is c. But c was not 0. So why do we care? Well, if you have a mod module finite domain extension and i is an ideal of r, then I claim that I star is equal to I S star intersect R. And actually, equal is true, but all I need is containment. Um, sorry, all I need is. All I need is this. Hence, I plus. So. Um, so. Proof, let X be an IS intersect R. Um, let D be a non zero element of S and uh, G from S to R. G of D not equal to zero. Um, actually, I'm going to do it this way. Um, okay. Okay. But D non zero um, 
and Q naught a power of P such that DX the Q is in IS the Q, which is IQS for all uh, Q naught. Um, then what you have um, at G um, from S to R, the R linear with G of D is not zero. Then um, by our linearity, what you have C X to the Q is equal to G of D X to the Q. Well, that's not our linear, that's just what we have. But then that's the same as G of D X to the Q because X to the Q is an R. Um, and that's contained in G of I Q S which again, by our linearity, this is contained in IQ G of S, which is contained in IQ. Um, so. so let R be an F rational local ring, then I claim that R is a normal domain. Okay, so first one shows that R is a domain. I'm going to omit that for now. Um, okay, so assuming that you knew that it was okay for domains, um, let K be the fraction field of R, let alpha be uh, integral over R. Then, um, let S be R bracket alpha. Uh, it's going to be module finite over R, right? That's, that's one of the equivalent definitions of an integral element, uh, you know, integral closure of rings. Um, so let's say alpha is equal to A over B. Uh, so A and B are in R and B is not zero. Uh, and what you have, A is equal to B alpha. So A is in BS, um, intersect R, which is contained in star, which is equal to B. Um, that's because, um, you know, B, the principal ideal is a parameter, is, is a parameter ideal, of, you know, I any mean, it's a non-zero element, the ring certainly are dimensional, so it's okay. Um, um, so what do you have? A equals B C for some C and R. And so you have B alpha is equal to B C. And therefore by cancellation in S, uh, alpha B C. There's probably a slicker proof of that somewhere, but um, yeah. All right. So um, I want to get to colon capturing. So colon capturing, test elements, and persistence. Um, colon capturing. So um, a lot of the power of tight closure theory um, comes from this colon capturing stuff, um, which is um, allows you to treat a uh, system of parameters as if it were a regular sequence um, uh, up to tight code. Um, so theorem, uh, R be equidimensional and a quotient of a comma Macaulay local ring. Let y bar be a system of parameters for R. Then two things, actually a whole lot of things, but at least these two things. For all j less than d, y1 through yj colon yj plus 1 is contained in y1 through yj star. Um, and two, um, 
for all um, t for all natural numbers t, if you take y1 through y d to the t, the colon with y1 through y d to the t minus one, this single element, you get inside of the tight closure of y1 to y. Right, so this certainly would be true for like variables over a over a um, you know polynomial ring over a field. Um, it's true for regular sequences without the tight closure, and so. But then the nice thing is that it's true for systems of parameters in this very general uh, context if you put the tight closure. In. Um, so proof. We'll just prove one. Uh, two is very similar. So um, first reduce to the main case. Okay, let P1 through PK be the minimal primes of R. Um, by equidimensionality, and we're assuming that R is equidimensional, uh, the dimension of R mod PJ is D for all J. And that's what I dimension on it is. Um, so the image of Y bar is a system of parameters uh, in each R mod PJ. Um, so um, let A be in Y1 through Yj colon 1Aj plus 1 over R. Then for each uh, Pi, this Pi, um, Y1 through Yj bar colon over R mod Pi is with Yj plus 1 bar is by the domain case below contained in Y1 bar to YJ bar tight closure in um, P. Um, it's the same as um, So then by reduce to domain case, Proposition above A is in the tight closure of of these matters uh, in R. Okay, so um, therefore we may assume now that R is a domain. Okay, so let S N be call Macaulay local with R equal S mod J, and J is prime, because R is a domain. Um, let T be dimension of S, um, then by Cohn macaulay the height of J, so let's call that H, is equal to T minus D. Um, so let X1 through XH be elements of J such that uh, in S localized at J, they become a system of parameters for S localized at J. Um, okay. So then um, X1 through XA, HSJ is JSJ primary. So, Nile, um, Nile, just one question, just, just, just for clarification. And, just for clarification, you say that uh, yes. your your sequence lives in J. So, and you are working in S mod J, and when you are modding our S mod J, this is become a system of parameters, but this becomes zero a priori. No, I'm not working in S mod J. I'm working in S localized. Ah, S localized. Okay, 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 okay. Yes. Thank you. So there is. Yes, yes, sir. So there exists an N such that JSJ to the N is contained in X1 through XH SJ, right? 
the max uh, m, uh, primary primary to the maximum ideal means that some power of the maximum ideal is contained in your ideal. Um, so there exists um, a C in S minus J with C J to the N is contained in X bar. Let's call it X bar. Um, so we're, we're kind of working in S here. Um, so let's choose, and I'm calling it C suggestively because this is going to end up, because that the, the residue class of this is going to end up being sort of testing our, our parameter ideal stuff. So choose Q naught bigger than or equal to N, that's the power of P. Then, you know, CJ to the Q naught is also contained. Okay. So, um, so what do we have before? We had this system of parameters in R. So let Z1 through ZD in S be liftings of Y1 through YD in R. Okay. Um, then I claim that um, for any power Q of P, uh, X1 through XH, along with Z1 to the Q, comma, Z, uh, D to the Q, is a permutable regular sequence in S. Right? Because it's a system of parameters uh, in a Col Macaulay local ring, and so it's a permutable regular sequence. Um, so, uh, so now to prove one, so now let A be an S with A bar in Y1 through Yj colon Yj plus one. Then what you have is that in, in S, so that's over R, then in S, Zj plus one times A is in Z1 through Zj um, plus capital J. So that means that for any Q bigger than or equal to Q naught, um, C, Zj plus one to the Q, A to the Q is in Z1 to the Q comma Zj to the Q plus Cj to the Q. But Cj to the Q is contained in the X's, right? So this is contained in Z1 to the Q, Zj to the Q, X's. I'm sorry, uh, I think it's H. Um, thus, when you have C A to the Q is in that sequence, comma, the X's colon zj plus one to q, but this is a regular sequence, so coloning doesn't make any difference. And then that's contained in z1 through zj to the q colon or plus capital J. So you have c bar, a bar to the q is in z1 to the q, cj, sorry, y. And that's for all, and, and, and uh, C bar is a non-zero element of the integral domain R, and uh, this is for all Q bigger than or equal to this Q naught, and therefore A bar is in Y1, Yj star. So that's the proof of one. That's the sort of classic colon capturing. And the proof of two is very, is very similar, um, modulo and an exercise. Um, so. Um, and a remark, um, any excellent ring is the homomorphic image of a Col Macaulay ring. Uh, Kawasaki proved that in 2002. Um, and so this is true for any equidimensional excellent local ring. Um, okay. And um, proof of two is similar. 
And as a, as a, a corollary, you get the monomial conjecture in characteristic P. Um, but, uh, but I didn't prove two, so I won't state that. Um, but a corollary to what we did above is an F rational ring in this circumstance has to be comacaulic. So let R be F rational and the homomorphic image F rational equidimensional and the homomorphic image of a comacaulic local ring. Actually, I don't even have to. Um, then R is Kamakali. So proof by an earlier result, uh, R is a normal domain. Hence, of course, it's equidimensional. Um, and let y1 through yb be the system of parameters. And what you have, y1 through yj, colon yj plus 1, is contained in y1 through yj star. This is colon capturing. But then this is equal to y1 through yj by f rationality. OK, and that's what the common poly ring is. Right. The system parameters is in fact a regular sequence. Okay. So section seven test elements. And the persistence of tight closure. Okay, so like I said before, this is something that really that, that makes type closure very powerful um, because um, you know choosing the C is generally a persnickety difficult thing in a general ring. Um, uh, uh, it, it's what makes type closure in some ways more difficult to deal with than, than like Fabini's closure, where you just take a power and it has to be on the correct power of an ideal. Um, so, right, you have infinitely many tests and you don't really know how to test it because you don't even know what element to try to multiply it by. Well, um, so definition. Let's see the an element of R naught. Then we say C is a test element. Um, respectively, a big test element. If for all ideals i and for all x and i star uh, c x to the q is an i bracket q for all q, respectively, for all submodule inclusions l and m and for all c and l star m, c z to the q m is an l q m for all. Uh, All um, so right, so big test element. That's a, that there, there's there's um, it's like tests for big modules <laughs> as opposed to just ideals. Um, and then there's this weak test element thing as well. So um, and that might seem like a lot to ask for, and in some sense it is. But there's this big theorem um, by you know Hofstra and Hewicki, and then there's part of it is in, in this thing of Sharp. So let R be a reduced um, ring that is either essentially of finite type over an excellent uh, local rate. Or uh, excellent and F pure, or so that 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 middle one is is, is uh, Sharpe's theorem from 2010, um, such that R one over P 
is finitely generated as an R module. Uh, so um, that's the condition called F finiteness. Um, then, oh, not just that there exist test elements, let C be any element of R naught such that RC is regular. So uh, the, all, such an element C always exists uh, in an excellent uh, reduced frame. Uh, basically by definition of excellence, um, which has to do with the regular locus being open. Um, then some power of C is a test element, is a big test element. Um, and prove C. Tucker's lectures for the domain case. And then a uh, proposition in, and then a proposition um, if R mod P has a big, or just a test element for every minimal prime P and R is reduced, then R has a big test element. So you really just have to do the domain case, really. Um, so um, I guess I should mention something about this theorem. Um, you might not know what essentially a finite type over another ring is. Um, so what that means is that um, um, there exists an excellent local ring A and uh, variables x1 through xn. And W, a multiplicative set in the polynomial ring, such that R is isomorphic to A bracket x1 to xn localized at W. So, That's what, I, that's what essentially a finite type over x over Okay, so. Um, Nile, just one question. In, in your previous definition, maybe you can allow that this, in, in the previous definition you have given about R, maybe you can allow that you can also model out by an ideal or is, is like this, the definition? Maybe oh, you sorry, can allow... yes, sorry. Sorry, yes, you're right. Or something you can you can mod out some some idea of there. Hmm. Yes, you're right, Fernando. Sorry. Yes. Yes. There's an ideal i such. Yeah. So you you extend polynomial variables, uh, localize and mod out by an ideal, and so that's what essentially client is. Um. Okay. Good. Good. Um. So let's just prove the non-big case of this. Um, that P1 through Pn be the minimal primes of R. Um, For each i, let di in R mod pi be a test element and choose ci, ti, and c as in the pack lemma. Then c is a test element. Um, and 
So let uh, I be an ideal and X and I star. Um, and for all I, uh, X bar is an IR mod PI star. So for all Q, VI times X bar to the Q is in my Q plus PI. Yeah. Um, is in just IQ plus BI. So TI, TI is in all these other um, uh, prime ideals, uh, all the other minimal primes. This is just one example of how this pack model works. And that's contained in I to the Q since R is reduced. Right, because it's in, um, is in I bracket Q plus the intersection of all the minimal primes of R, but all the minimal primes of R, to, um, hence CX to the Q is in IQ, since C is equal to the sum over I of IQ. Okay. Um, so, proposition 7.4. Tight closure is a closure operation in, uh, in such a so um, let R be a ring satisfying um I'll say a ring with a big test element. Then tight closure is a closure operation on the category of all R modules. Not just the finite ones. So, proof we need only establish idempotence. So, let Z be in the tight closure of the tight closure of L in M. In M. Uh, let's see be a test element. Um, then for all Q regular equal to Q naught, well, for all Q really, um, CZ to the Q is an L star QM, but also C times L star. Uh, QM is contained in LQM because it's true for all the elements of L star M. So C squared CQM is contained at C times L star QM. L star, yeah. Which is then contained in LQM. But C is also, but C squared is also in R naught. Thus, Z is in L star. Okay, so I said test elements and the persistence of tight closure. So I claim that with this theorem on test elements, you can then show that tight closure persists. So that means that's like better than functoriality. That means if you're actually changing rings, uh, you can maintain that a tight that um, if you're in the tight closure of an ideal, then the image of that element is in the tight closure of the of the of the image of that ideal. Um, so I let G from R to S be a ring homomorphism. Um, we say tight closure persists across uh, G for ideals. respectively for modules if for all ideals 
um, I, if X, um, let me say it this way, G of I star is contained in I S star. Respectively, for all submodules, inclusions, L and M, G of L star M. Uh, let's say G prime of L star M contained in L S star and tensor S. So <clears throat> what do I mean by that? So L S is going to be the image of L tensor S and M tensor S. And G prime uh, is the sort of the natural map from M to M tensor S. So if you take the closure of L and M and you take the, the natural thing, you know, induced by G. And uh, you take a uh, cyclosure of L and M, and you take the and, and, and you take the natural thing induced from G, and you apply it. You get inside what happened if you first went to um, you know sort of tensor everything with S and took the cyclosure there. So that's persistence. Uh, if, if you can see how that would be a useful uh, uh, thing. Um, and the and the theorem the big theorem here is that is that existence of test elements in the way that we've said uh, implies persistence theorem. Um, let's be from R to S the ring map such that R satisfies the conditions of the um, theorem on on um, test elements, then tight closure persists across uh, uh, G, both for ideals and for uh, So proof is for ideals. Um, so basically, you want to reduce to the, the case where R and S are domains. And B, G is surjective. And the height of the kernel. So the reason you can go to that case is basically, um, okay, you reduce to the domain case to show that R and S are, are domains. If it's an inclusion of domains, then uh, then you're then you're okay by an exercise. Um, and so, and every map between domains factors through a surjection and then an inclusion. So you've got a surjection from one domain onto another. And then um, the, there's going to be a, um, an induction on, on the height of primes. So, um, so assuming that we're okay with that, with the, all those reductions, and it's all detailed in the notes. Um, so let P be the kernel of G. Um, and let R prime be the integral closure of R by excellence of R, right? We're assuming uh, that R can satisfy these nice conditions. Um, R prime is module finite over R. Um, and so by integrality, you can choose a P prime in spec R prime with 
E prime intersect R is equal to P. And again, by excellence, uh, or by integrality, P prime has height one. Um, and by excellence of R prime, since we know it's a theory and stuff, um, the regular locus of R prime is open. Um, so there's a C in R prime uh, minus P prime. Sorry. That's true, but I skipped something. So R prime localized to P prime is a DDR. Hence, um, uh, you know, regular, right? Because R prime is normal. It's a very nor normal domain. Uh, so by excellence of R prime, the regular locus of R prime is open. So there's some C in R prime minus P prime, such that R prime localized at C is regular. Um, hence by the above the, the, the uh, theorem on test elements, uh, C has power C to the N that is a test element for our prime. Okay. So great. So now let I be an ideal. X be an I star. Then X is in the tight closure of I R prime because persistence is okay for inclusions of domains. Um, so for all Q, CX to the Q is in IR prime bracket Q. Um, so going mod P prime, we have C bar X bar to the Q is in uh, IR prime mod P prime at closure. Um, and C bar isn't zero in R prime mod P prime. Uh, so that means that X bar is an I R prime on a P prime star. But R prime on P prime is a module finite extension of the domain on my P. So when you have X bar is an I R prime on P prime intersect R mod P star, which is then I R mod P star. But R mod P is S. And that's what we wanted to show. So sorry for skipping all the, the reduction steps, but um, it's, you know, that they, they actually do end up being quite straightforward. Um, so um, and this has some important corollaries, and I'll end with those. Um, so let S be a complete weekly F regular local ring, and R a complete local subring such that IS intersect R is equal to I for all ideals I of R. For instance, R is a direct sum end of S. We'll always apply that. Um, this is called um, cyclic purity. Um, then R is weekly up regular. Okay, so prove. Um, so I is contained in I star, which is contained in IS star 
intersect R, this is by persistence, is a direct sum, but sum end of a complete ring is going to be complete. Oh, actually, I didn't even say that. I said R is complete, so it's it's excellent. And so, um, and it's, it's domain, right? Um, so this is equal to IS intersect R, which is equal to I. So it's a C S is equal to F right there. Um, okay. So now proposition. Uh, let S be regular and R an Ethereum subring such that R to S is split. Then R is column and column. And if uh, R is locally excellent, it's also normal. Um, yeah, and I'm out of time, but it comes, it comes from, from persistence because, um, you can, well, it comes from, from this corollary above, um, you've got these basically, um, once you reduce to, to a nice case, um, you can reduce to the complete case. Um, so S is a complete regular local ring. Um, therefore it is, uh, weekly F regular, in fact, it's F regular, and therefore um, R is going to be, um, and uh, you also get um, uh, normality um, because uh, F rational is normal. And so F regular implies weekly F regular, and that ends up uh, um, giving you a new uh, proof of the Hoxter Roberts theorem that if uh, S is a polynomial ring, K of field, and G is a linearly reductive group, then the ring of invariance SG is called Macaulay. And that's because, um, because it's the direct sum end, because there's this thing called the, rank, the Reynolds operator, which splits the inclusion from SG into S. Okay. <laughs> Again, sorry for rushing. Uh, I guess I put too much in these in these lectures, but it was hard to know what to leave out. I did leave out a lot of things. Um, anyway, thank you. Um, any questions? I assume there's probably a lot. Hi, in my case, one question. In the previous corollary, uh, of course, if you have that R inside S, uh, if you have that R inside S is faithfully flat, this also works, right? Um, because the condition I as intersection yeah. is automatic. Yeah. Right. So, so this is more general. That's just, of course, if, if 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 this is a direct sum, and this is uh, in part, uh, this is another situation. But I think faithful right. flat is a bit more general sometimes. Well, it's I mean it's, it, it, it they're they're independent properties. Yes, right? yes, yes. You, yeah, you're right. It you're doesn't right. imply it's a great direct sum end and. Direct sum end doesn't imply basically flat, but, but they both imply uh, what's called cyclic purity, which is this mm -hmm. property. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's right. That's a good comment. Yeah, so that that's a good thing. Is yeah, that that um, that weak up regularity uh, among complete local rings uh, descends um, uh, along basically uh, sorry along um, basically flat maps. Yeah. Yeah, so you get all this this power from being able to pass type closure uh, back and forth between things. Kriti, do you have a question? Um, actually, there's a comment. Uh, so in the Hoxter Roberts theorem, uh, you're assuming characteristic of the field doesn't divide the other two. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm I'm assuming that um, the characteristic no, um, um, characteristic. Of the, I think that that's part of being linearly reductive, isn't it? Um, yeah, maybe I need to assume. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Um, yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, and then the the other question in the chat was answered in the chat. Um, well, it's not quite true. So normal, I, I guess the, the definition of normal is different from what was
was said in the chat. So the question is, what does it mean for a ring to be normal? What it means is that whenever you localize at a maximal ideal, you get a ring that's integrally closed, or that you get an integral domain that's integrally closed in its fraction field. Um, but it turns out uh, that if you had a, an Ethereum normal ring, it's going to be the um, finite direct, it's going to be a finite direct product of Ethereum normal domains. Um, so that's in the basic uh, theory of integral closure of rings. Um, yeah. So that answers those chat questions. So for instance, if you're local, then integrally closed in your fraction field, it, then that's the, the normal is the same thing as saying it's, it's a, a integral domain that's integrally closed in its fraction field. And that invariant stuff and the direct sum end stuff, I, I think uh, Lin Chuan Ma is going to uh, talk more about that in, in his lectures, most likely. So, um, in your proof that an F rational ring is normal, um, it seemed like really, I mean, is this factoring through? Uh, yeah, sorry, that was quite a while ago. <laughs> um, is this really factoring through somehow the fact that? For principal ideals, tight closure is equal to integral closure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess that's, I guess that's, yeah. That would be another way to say it. I, I tried to to make these lectures without having to mention integral closure of ideals. So yeah, I mean, it's it's essentially um, because of that. Um, yeah, there it is. Um, so so I guess it's something like if you're I mean, in, a, in, in a, a domain where every um, domain where every principal ideal is tightly closed, then you're normal. So, so yeah, so here's, here's the, here's the, 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 the sequence of, of implications. And some of this is going to be done in the uh, Brionz and Skoda lectures. I forget who's doing those. Uh, maybe Ian Aberbach. Um, uh, so uh, for principal ideals, tight closure is the same as integral closure for those ideals. Um, uh, and so, um, and in general, whether your characteristic P or not, um, a, a, um, a ring is integrally closed in its total ring of fractions if and only if every principal ideal generated by a non zero divisor is um, integrally closed. So, um, therefore, it follows that an F rational, yeah, that an F rational ring is. is um, F rational of uh, yeah, rings, local ring is, is going to be. Um, but yeah, that's right. That's right. I mean, the thing is that the integral closure, but that, that, that also factors through the fact that the integral closure of a principal ideal is in some sense a much simple, a much simpler sort of object than the uh, integral closure of a general ideal, because the integral closure of a principal ideal is just the same thing as as go up to um, the, the normalization and contract back, um, or go up to the integral closure of, of the ring in its total ring of quotients and contract back, um, and and that's not true for non-principal ideals in general, like two generated ideals. It's like really false a lot, um, <laughs> and um, uh, but so so this like principal ideals are simpler than other ideals. No, no surprise there. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, thanks. Okay, so we want to thank uh, Neil for his nice lectures. Yeah. Well, thanks for bearing with my um, pacing issues, but I, I hope this is uh, useful stuff to, to understand um, the basics of tight closure and um, how to work with it and um, the other lectures going forward. So. Thank you. Thank you, Neil. Um, I'm saying it's functorial. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I hope it is. I think it's, I mean, there's a lot of definitions of, of integral closure of, of modules and like, um, but I think in all the in all the existing ones, they, they are actually functorial. Yeah. yeah.
Hmm. Okay. There's a question in chat. Oh, What's the relation between Frobenius closure and integral closure? Oh yeah, I'm gonna. Um, so uh, I was gonna get into that later in the lectures. Frobenius closure is so pretty. Um, it, 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 integral closure is bigger. Um, is, is, is the short answer. But in fact, you have a whole uh, sequence of closures. On, uh, 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 um, so for any ideal I, the Frobenius closure of I is contained in the tight closure of I, which in turn is contained in the integral closure of I, which in turn is contained in the radical of I. Um, And, and, and yeah, just like push. tight closure has uh, characteristic Z, zero analog, does Frobenius closure also have characteristic Z, zero analog? Um, I don't think so. Um, I mean, I've never seen it. I mean, I guess you could try to do reduction to characteristic P. I mean, the natural thing would, would be to say that in all the characteristic P models, I'm sorry, that in infinitely many characteristic P models, the, the, the that sort of the, ver the that characteristic P version of the element would be in the Frobenius closure of the characteristic P version of the of the ideal, but I mean, yeah, I've never seen anybody do that. Um, mm. There, I mean, there's reasons like, I mean, um, for a long time people thought that that you know tight closure would have this property that if you know, if you're in the tight closure in all in infinitely many characteristic P models, that you're going to be in the tight closure in almost all of them. Um, but then uh, Brenner and um, uh, Katzman have a counterexample to that, so that's you know that's not true. Um, and it, but it was known from early on that that wasn't true with Frobenius closure. I have an example in my in my, in my lecture notes uh, at the end. Um, okay. So, but yeah, um, I guess you could make that definition of Frobenius closure. But in general, Frobenius closure is considered to be more poorly behaved in many ways than tight closure. Um, mm -hmm. That's a, a segue to another question that I have. And this, I guess, is more related to, uh, to material from, from Craig's talk, so feel free to defer. But um, I'm very interested personally in my own research in studying Frobenius closure. Um, and in particular, I've been trying to develop the right you know, maybe it's it's out there, uh, but the right map theoretic notion to get integral closure of ideal, or sorry, Frobenius closure of ideals. So, is there a notion of you know maps to the right kinds of rings that when you can track back, you're going to get the Frobenius closure? Oh yeah. Um, I mean, let me just be careful. Um, yeah. So there's this thing called the. Um, I don't know if this maps to them, but I mean, I will say there's this thing called the perfect closure of, 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 of a ring, which is the, and you probably know about it, um, which is the, um, uh, uh, just all the, all the, basically all the R to the one over Qs at once, like the union of, of the R to the one over Qs in, in that ring K that I, that I showed, um, assuming the rings reduced. Um, and, uh, and so, and, uh, and one way to find Frobenius closure is extend to that ring and contract that. Um, and, um, and similarly, you know, you look at the, for a, for a module, if you have a module M, uh, you look at the natural map from M to M tensored with, it's called R perf. It used to be called R infinity, but everyone says R perf now um, for perfect. Um, <laughs> So you look at the map from R, uh, M to M to uh, M tensor R perf, and you look at your submodule L, and you look at the elements that that in that map land inside L tensor R perf. I mean, that's the elements of M that land in L tensor R perf, um, and you call, and then that's that's the Frobenius closure of L and M. Um, but I I don't know if that's what you what you're asking for. A little bit. I mean, so. R to R perf is an example of a purely inseparable extension, right? So uh, I'm wondering if something like, you know, if you contract I back from the purely inseparable extension of even of certain flavors, that you'll get um, get the Arrhenius closure. But anyway, this is a research question that's not maybe not appropriate for the science. <laughs> I, I bet that'll work. Huh. 
Okay, yeah, interesting. Yeah, maybe I'll follow up with you some other time. Thanks. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Can I ask you something new? Of course, Arena. Yeah, uh, this is not regarding what you covered, but like, is this first part of your talk will broadly follow your paper on like closure operation in commutative algebra? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, yeah, yeah, that's, that's sort of where I, I that, that's when I, I developed this, um, this approach um, is, um, yeah, I, I, that, that's, that's in there, yeah. Um, some version of that's in there, but I mean, some version of that's in the, in these lecture notes too, that, that you'll see soon enough. Um, yeah, you know, um, I want to do a survey on closure operations and I was the, and I thought, well, how broadly defined are these things? And like really broadly, they're even more broadly defined than this. After Moore did his stuff, um, then like, you know, uh, poset theorists said, okay, well, you can sort of define this on any poset. It doesn't have to be the, the post set of subsets of a given set. It can just be any partially ordered set. And then you, you change your containment relations to you know the 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 less than or equal to sign that exists in that post set. You still and and then it's still if it's a if it's a post set where where all arbitrary meets exist, um, then you know then then you, you still get this one to one correspondence that Moore um, pointed out in his paper 112 years ago. Um, so yeah, I mean it's very it's very general, um, and and that's you know they, they use that it's somehow in lattice theory in a way that I don't. Uh, that I've never looked into. <laughs> um, Any other questions? But yeah. I'm oh, sorry. Okay. But yeah, Kyle, I'll happily defer your question to anybody that might know more about it than, than I do. <laughs> Anyway, more questions. I've looked and it seems like no one has written about about. I mean, much less has written about Frenius closure closure, which is where I'm trying to make That's my right. niche. Yeah, so. No, it's great. 